Welcome to Framework Fortune Crypto and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and this is lesson number two in a series of crypto trading lessons I'm going to be doing where I'm sharing my experience for being in the stock market for seven years and adding cryptos as an asset to things that I like to trade. So a lot of things you're going to learn in these lessons will also work on stocks, work on futures, uh, any other type of assets that can be charted like this. So if you want to join me on this journey and you haven't yet, go ahead and think about hitting that subscribe button so that way you'll be notified when these lessons come out. And I also do daily crypto updates on the channel here. Let's not waste any more time and dive in. We're going to look at time frames for the first part of this lesson and what a time frame is if you're new to trading or investing is the amount of time that you are looking back on on the chart. So the chart with these candles show the price action within a certain amount of time. If we're in a daily chart, each one of these candlesticks is going to be a whole day of price action, 24 hours, because the crypto market's open 24 hours. And daily charts, because the candles are daily, usually spread out to about a year. I like to look at the daily chart over a year span because that is the most recent information, but back long enough to show me some history of the price movements. And being able to look at this right now, if we were just looking at Bitcoin on the daily chart for September, we would be missing out on all these areas of support and resistance, which we'll be getting more into later, and all these areas of pivot points at support and resistance, which we'll get into as well. Simply enough, a pivot point though, is just where the price runs up, hits a resistance area and pivots back down. Or if it's coming down, it hits a support area and then the price turns back up. So that's pretty much all there is to pivot points. It's just the movement of the stock when it turns at one of those areas. And then we can also see past trends. If I turn my drawings on, we have the strong support already drawn because this is a lot of places where these candles hit. This red line is a downtrend line, obviously, because it's pointing down. So this shows us that the trend currently on Bitcoin is downtrending. And I wouldn't be able to know that if I didn't look back a day. Now for long term investments in cryptos, there's not that many that are that old. Bitcoin is the oldest. I would look back even even further like three years, four years, because we look back here just to see if there's any strong pivot points that could hold up as a support area. And right there at 20,000, this pivot point could be one of those support areas as you go straight across and see some more little pivots there. So even with the daily chart, we wouldn't know 20,000 was some support for Bitcoin unless we look back there. So no matter what, whether I'm day trading, swing trading, or long-term investing, I am going to look at this chart. I am going to look at a daily time frame on a year span to look for those indicators that I was talking about. But I'm not going to take entries or exits on a daily chart. What I mean is I'm not going to buy into a stock or sell a stock on this time frame because it is a day candle. So there's a lot of information that we're missing out by not going in deeper. So I'm going to take an entry, whether it be long term or short term, I'm going to go into the five minute. So we look at the five minute chart here since Bitcoin has opened each one of these candles each one, every single one, is five minutes worth of trading information. People buying and selling, right? If I was just to look at the daily, I might have bought right here at 42,719. But if I was looking at the five minute, we can see that Bitcoin had a dip down here to 41,800. So buying right now, you're kind of buying a little high, but Bitcoin is starting to move bullish on this five minute time frame because we do have some upward momentum here in the past half of the day. The overall picture of these five minute candles are pushing up. And if we go into the last 15 minutes, we can see we just tested that little uptrend, that upward momentum this was getting, and Bitcoin did hold above it. So I would have rather got in here at 42,600 in this dip, or 42,625, than buying up here $100 or $150 more. It's going to be the same thing no matter the price of the crypto. So we look at Cardano in the last 20 minutes, we can see Cardano was up at 232 and just dropped back down 
to this price range of 230 225 that held earlier. So if this holds again in this area, this might be a good place to take an entry on the five minute because we're not buying it up here at 232. We're buying it down here at 229, a lot cheaper price. We look back through to the start of the day, we can see Cardano was all the way up to 250. So yeah, this is a low price right now comparatively. Cardano could continually drop from this price at the current moment. I'm just using this as an example for the time frames. So when I'm day trading stocks, I usually have two charts up. I have a daily chart and I have a five minute chart. I have the five minute chart usually above and the daily chart right below. So that way I can see the past history and see those price levels while I also can see what's happening at the current moment and what's happened recently in the last 30 minutes in the movements of buying and selling. Now, depending on the crypto, some of them don't move that fast on the five minute. You may have to pull back a little bit more. When there's not a lot of people buying and selling cryptos, you can get some ugly patterns like this or if they have some big supply. Stellar Lumens gets a lot of buying, but it has a very big supply, so these candles are not that fluid. So it's very choppy motion, so to get a better read, even if we go to 15, it's still choppy, so we gotta continue to go out until we get something a little more fluid. And that's a little better on the 30 minutes. So some cryptos will depend. You might have to play around from the five minute to the 30 minute to get a nice fluid motion. But once you've got that, you'll be able to figure out your entries and exits a lot more accurate with this shorter time frames. Now, if I'm swing trading, I look at the daily. And of course, I'll take my entries on the five minute or 30 minutes, something like that. But I do look at the four hour. And the reason why I look at the four hour, and you see this every day in the daily crypto updates, I'm always looking at the four hour is because even though the daily gives us a general idea of which direction a crypto is going, the four hour is going to give us a little bit more information. Looking at the four hour here on XLM, we can see we have like a little mountain type of pattern here going on. This little bowl, like an upside down bowl, little mountain. And that is usually a bearish pattern, usually leads to a sell off on the four hour. But now that we're looking at the daily, we can see oh, this may not lead to a sell-off because the bottom of this candle is right here and then these two candles held up this area. Buyers came in at these areas. So we can use that to take an educated guess that this actually may not be a bearish pattern on the four hour, but if the four hour continues to sell off, then we'll know it is a bearish pattern. But just looking at that daily, you wouldn't know for sure what is gonna be happening here in the next four to 10 hours on this. The directions of cryptos can change very rapidly. You don't have to use a ton of time frames. I like to keep things as simple as possible because crypto price ranges and circulating supplies and tokenomics and all that are so different. You may have to use some off charts like a 30 minute or something. So you can use that whether you're day trading, swing trading, or long-term investing. But if you're day trading, you are going to be on that five minute, maybe even the one minute. If it's got enough people buying and selling the crypto, then that one minute chart might really be moving. So we look at IOTX here on the one minute, and this has had enough people buying and selling, which is what these bars are, this is the volume. We have a very liquid chart pattern, so we could play this chart pattern for scalps and day trades. You can see on this pop up, when it came back down to this area right here, and held that price range that could have been a quick entry for 0 0.067 and you get a push up here to 0.7 because it's so cheap you can buy a lot of this coin that would have been a nice little scalp right through there now on these time frames these charts that i'm looking at you can see there's some other lines i have on there now these are a certain type of indicator and these indicators I use on stocks and cryptos and they work very well and I'll explain why. But to explain what they are, they're moving averages. And all that means is just a line that is showing you an average price of the stock movement over a time period. And the longer the time period, and same thing for charts, the time frame, longer the time period, longer the time frame, the stronger the support and resistance. The longer time that you have charted out, the more information that you have to make that. So it's gonna be more accurate. So these moving averages, when you click on them and you go to inputs and every broker is gonna be a little bit different how you put them in there, it's gonna show the length. 
and the length is that time frame. So this red line here I got is a 200 day moving average. So that is the amount of information over a 200 day span averaged out. And that is going to be one of the strongest indicators. If we look back on the chart, we can see where this red line has been very close to Bitcoin. And anytime Bitcoin pulls off of this red line, it comes back to the red line. It always snaps back. And that has even happened here recently. We went on that big massive run and it got way off of that 200 day up here at 65,000 and it had to snap back. Same thing, we just had another little rebound up to 50,000, but Bitcoin had to snap back. And it doesn't matter the asset, that 200 day is always gonna act like that. Now the blue line I have is the 50 day. So it's a medium range amount of days, which means it's gonna ride closer to the stock price movements because it's not quite as much information averaged in, but it does serve a good purpose. And one of those purposes is support and resistance. So we'll dive into it more in the crypto trading lesson three when we talk about support and resistance. But you can see there where the 50 day, this blue line, held up this price area across here. All these candles stayed above that blue line and then they actually bounced off of it. And that happens over and over again in a bull market like this. We can see one, two, three, four, five, six bounces before it started going bearish. And that also right there shows you in a bull market, if we stop bouncing off of that 50 day moving average, things can get a little choppy. That was a good sign right there to let us know, hey, we could start seeing a pullback in Bitcoin. Now I did rebound really quickly, but could not stay above that blue line, so fell below it. Now this green line is an even shorter time frame. It is a 10 day, see there, length 10. So it's gonna stick to the stock really, really close. And this is more for day trading than it is long term, but I do keep it on the daily chart because it has its purposes even on the daily chart. We can see once it got way off this 50 and it was really running here, the 10 day held right across there and showed, oh, Bitcoin is gonna to continue to run until the price cracked back below it. So this whole rip here, you could have held, if you got in at 40,000, you would have been able to hold knowing that you're good as long as the price is staying above the green line. And as soon as the price gets way off the green line, what happens? Snap back to the green line and it snapped back to the blue line. So these EMAs are gonna act as areas that will snap the price back to it. They'll also act as support and resistance. And then another thing that I use them for is crossovers. So right here when we started getting all this congestion, when we finally got a indicator that Bitcoin was really going to drop was when it got to here and the 10 day, which would had been above the 50 day, had cracked below and crossed over the 50 day. And you can see it, the price drug it all the way down and we even went below the 200 day. But right there, as soon as that happened, you would know in that area, oh, I should probably look to get out of Bitcoin while it's selling off because of this crossover. And those crossovers can happen to the downside like that, but they can also happen to the upside. So we look back through here, we can see the 10 day, when this had a big sell off, it was below all these EMAs, the moving averages. It started pushing back up and when the 10 day crossed the 50 to the upside, you could just roll that 10 day straight on up and locked out your profit up there. So these crossovers are going to signal a change in direction of the price. And there's multiple different types of moving averages, but I mainly use the exponential and it's a personal preference thing because the exponential is calculated with a little more accuracy than the simple moving averages. But you can use them on any time frame. So if we go into the five minute chart again on Bitcoin, and we're looking for a day trade. Well, we can see there was a crossover right here about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago. Bitcoin had dropped down, started coming back up. The 10 day crossed over the 200 day and the 50 day. It had a nice little move up. Now the price did drop back below the 10 day here and it got down there pretty quickly. So it snapped right back up above it. And you'll see these crossovers all the time. Here's another one right here. 10 day crossing over, getting a nice bullish movement. We see the price drop here. We see the 10 day cross back below the EMAs. We get some bearish movement. Those can help you with support and resistance as well as the price movements of the crypto. 
Now there's some more indicators, volume bars down here. These are considered indicators. These little fellows way down here. I'm gonna take the chart off so you can see these a little bit better. These volume bars are going to be in the same time period as the candles are. So if we're on a five minute chart, each one of these volume bars is five minutes of buying and selling. Now volume is the amount of cryptos or in the stock market amount of shares of an asset traded over a time period. So five minute volume bar means five minutes worth of buying and selling. When we have a lot of volume like this bar here, we'll have some nice pops up. See that buying volume green bar, green means buy, red means sell, buying volume coming in there and we got a nice that little nice push up. When we start getting a big red volume bar here, a lot of selling, we get a move down. So you can look at these volume bars to be able to tell how the price of the stock may be moving or if you're getting close to a breakout. So if we bring the chart back down here close to them, we spread this out right here. We can see we've not had much buy-in volume here recently. But if Bitcoin's going to continue to push up here, we need to see some increasing green buy-in volume bars, some bigger bars like back here and back here. If we start seeing more big red bars, well, that means there's going to be more people selling and the price is going to start going down. So that is another indicator you can use. When we get really volatile and we get a lot of action happening in the market, you can see those volume bars can be very, very big, but they can tell you some information as well. So that's another type of indicator. And this purple line here, which I don't use that often, it's not something I'm a big fan of. I just have it on here. But this is the RSI. It just basically has some numbers where like, oh, okay, if this is dropped down here, it's oversold in this area, you know, 20 and under is oversold. This purple area is kind of the middle and then the top up here would be overbought. So when this purple line gets way up here, means that there's been too much buying and it's going to lead to some selling. You see that happened right there. Bitcoin was pushing up, pushing over that top line into the black area and then sold off but hung out down here and then buyers come in and pushed it up but you can see that on the chart so you don't necessarily need this uh, if you understand the price action but it can help you on a longer time frame or a swing trade to see maybe this could be a buying opportunity if something is super super underbought for example, OKB, the Nervos network, you can see it's cracking out of that purple space right at the moment. So it's getting oversold. It's had too much selling. But if we look up at the chart, we can see, obviously, that it's had too much selling. So that's why I'm not like a big fan of this. But, you know, if you want to use it, you can. I just don't think it's that necessary. But there's all types of indicators. So if I go to the indicator button on TradingView, look through here, I mean, just tons and tons of indicators. I'm not a huge indicator person. I mainly just use those EMAs and the volume bars because I don't like a whole lot of drawings to a whole lot of stuff to cloud up my charts. You can overcomplicate things. I'm, now the platform I'm using now for day trading cryptos is Coinbase Pro and that's only because we don't really have a lot of options in America and these charts are garbage and you only have these two EMAs which are weird EMAs or not ones that I would use, but you can use them if you want. But looking at the platform, we've got our charting here, and then we've got this trade history, which in the stock market it's called a time and sales. But it's basically giving you a printout or a receipt, basically, of all the transactions that are going through right now. So each one of these transactions, you have the trade size, which is going to be the amount of the crypto for the price that they're buying or selling it at, and the time. And of course, if it's green, it's a buy. If it's red, it's a sell. So if you see a whole bunch of green on this time and sells, a whole bunch of buyers, and the trade sizes are getting bigger and the price is going up, that's a good sign that crypto has momentum and will continue to push. Right now, Bitcoin's looking like it may try to push up to 43,000 because we are getting a lot more green than red. But we start seeing the opposite, seeing a lot more red. See right there, there's a little red. You see where the candle just pulled back, but we continue to get more heavy green, then that'll push up. So this is a nice way to confirm the price action, which way the crypto is going. Now you also have this order book, which is similar to a level two in the stock market. So you're seeing the buys on this side and you're seeing the sales on this side, the orders that are lining up. Some of these orders might go through, some of them might not, but you can see the orders that are coming up 
that haven't been placed yet or are getting placed at the moment. So the price may be a little different if there's a spread because on Bitcoin we have a $5 spread right now and then just changed again but still kind of a $5 spread. But this can give you some ideas of where support and resistance are and if something's going to break out if you're seeing a lot bigger position sizes and a lot bigger buys on this order book. So those are tools, those are indicators that you can use and I definitely recommend using at least the time and sales. Those are the transactions that have happened. There's not really too much else to go through the platform on Coinbase as a app, but there is this little order box and if you're trading you got to understand the difference between a market order and a limit order. And both of these orders you can use on the buy or sell side. So look at the sell side. There's the market and there is the limit. So you have that option. Now market order guarantees that your order will get filled. So if I put in, uh, you know, max right here, $636 worth of Bitcoin and I press place buy, I am going to get filled. But it will not guarantee at what price. So you will get filled somewhere in the spread could be around the bid, could be above the bid, could be at the ask, could be a little bit above the ask. So you're not going to get a guaranteed price fill. You're not know you're not going to know exactly what price you're getting until you place buy. Now, of course, it's not going to fill you way down at like ten thousand right now. It's only going to be in these price ranges of these candles. Now, a limit order, on the other hand, you can see if I go max, we have a limit price we have to put in. And the limit price is what we want to buy this at. So if we wanted to buy Bitcoin at 42, let's say 42,800, since it's coming up there to 42,800, we'd have to put that price in. Now, if I was to press place buy, this order would go in. And if somebody wanted to sell me that much Bitcoin at 42,800, then my order could get filled. But limit orders do not guarantee that you will get filled. They only guarantee the price. So market orders guarantee you get filled, but don't guarantee price. Limit orders guarantee price, but don't guarantee you will get filled. Now, the other order option you have is a stop price. When you hear me talking about stop losses, this is what you would use for that. The stop price, you put in the amount, same way as you would the limit order. You put in the price, same thing as your limit price. So if we wanted to put the stop loss order in under 40000 or at 40000 to sell, we put 40000 there. But when we place sell, this stop price, since we put in the price at 40000 the stop price would be way down here. And that order would not get hit until the price comes down there. Now, it is a limit order. It's a stop limit. So you may not get filled with that stop limit. So I've not had great experience with the stops and the stop limit orders on the sell side with Coinbase Pro. It's been multiple times I've put a stop loss in and it didn't get filled. And I took some nasty little losses. Until we get some better platforms which Webull continues to slowly add cryptos to, but Webull's desktop platform has gotten really good for stocks. And if they would just add more coins, could be really great for crypto trading too. It's always been a decent phone app that I've liked and supported, but now that it's get now that its desktop application is really starting to catch up to a lot of the other exchanges in the market, uh, I'm pretty impressed and. If that keeps happening, I think we will, will be a decent one to trade cryptos on. So that's it for crypto trading lesson number two. If there's anything that you're still unsure about that I've covered so far, ask me down in the comments and I'll get to it and try to clear it up. Or maybe it will be cleared up in the third installment of this series. If you want to continue to see me put out these crypto trading lesson videos, hit that like button so we can continue to grow the Framework Fortune community. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.